You're listening to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the community for the best sales and marketing professionals in the aviation industry. You can't learn to fly just from a book. You learn from other pilots who know the tools, the skills, and the territory. Your hosts, John and Paula Williams, are your sales and marketing test pilots. They take the risks for you and share strategies, relevant examples, hacks, and how-tos. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you won't miss a thing. Welcome to Aviation Hangar Flying, episode number 29. Today we're going to talk about digital versus print, part two. I'm Paula Williams. And I'm John Williams. Together we are ABCI, and our mission is... To help aviation companies sell more of their products and services. So, um, just recently we started using a hashtag for conversation about our podcasts or our webinars or anything else for that matter. Um, we promise to reply any tweet or uh, Facebook share or anything else that uses this hashtag and uh, we will reply to every tweet. So, that hashtag is AvGeekMarketing. All right. Our motto is no random acts of marketing, right? Um, we want to know what you're doing and why. So after last week's episode, when we talked about print versus digital and some of the pros and cons of each, some people, you know, of course, everybody has an opinion. Don't they, John? Yes. They are <laughs> like other things. Everybody's got at least one. Right. And uh, some people have more than one opinion. <laughs> yeah. Which is fine, too. But... Uh, a lot of people are very, very biased in, in favor of digital right now because it gives you the opportunity to see who's clicking on your links. Um, you can do some great analytics. You can account for your money um, a lot more effectively than you can in print. Uh, another thing that it allows you to do is spend less money. Uh, and also, you can work from anywhere. So, you know, if you don't have a physical location, it's kind of hard to do print unless you outsource that to a great print shop like we do, right? Exactly. Okay. There's a great quote from Mark Twain uh, that the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> and uh, we found that the same is really true of print. Uh, reports of the demise of the mailbox were premature. Um, there was probably an equal or greater number of emails and, and tweets and other things that we got indicating that uh, they really like the aviation catalogs, they really like the, the printed publications, they really like a lot of those things. And John, I think you fall into that camp, is that right? By and large, I like a piece of paper. I prefer books that are on paper in front of me that I can flip back and forth. Yeah, you can't put bookmarks like, like you can on some of the uh, readers, but uh, that's okay. You also don't get the opportunity, in my opinion, to flip back and forth and reread stuff just because you can recognize what page it came from. Exactly. And John really is, uh, we like to say, our target demographic uh, in the aviation industry. Uh, you know, gender, age, military experience, education, all of that stuff usually falls squarely into the category of this is the perfect person to market to. So the things that John likes tend to be the kinds of things that work really well with aviation customers. So we take that very seriously. One of the problems with the aviation industry is that, especially when you get really specific, a lot of our companies spell, sell very specific products that are, you know, components or software or maintenance processes, you know, services and things like that for a very specific group of people. And it's really hard to do testing for a very specific group of people. Um, and it's hard to have statistics on hand about what's going to work for them and what's not going to work for them. So we like to use statistics from some bigger companies. And one thing that we got in the mail from a, a friend of ours that's in one of our uh, mastermind groups, and of course it came the week after we did our last podcast, was a really great article, Direct Mail Breaks Outdated Marketing Assumptions, and this is by Sean Buck. If you are familiar with Costco, and who's not familiar with Costco, right? Exactly. Um, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And uh, they're one of those companies that has the numbers that is able to do the kind of testing that we wish we were able to do in the aviation industry, right? <laughs> yeah, our studio's got everything but an espresso maker. <laughs> they still can't make up for the fact that sometimes you need a drink of something to get your throat clear. <laughs> exactly. 
So um, Costco sends 8.6 million magazines and catalogs per month. They are the third largest monthly publication in the world. The average member who receives a Costco connection has a household income of 156,000, which actually puts them in the um, affluent category. And 56 million, or sorry, 56% of their members who receive the monthly magazine buy something based off of what they read in the magazine. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, it's really hard to isolate, and especially with print, um, it's, it's very, very difficult to say, you know, did they see it in the store first and then see it in the catalog, and then they mentioned the catalog when they called in to buy it. You know, we really don't know. Um, and that's, Unless. Yeah. Unless there happens to be a, what do they call those little things, those QR codes? QR codes. There's something you can zap with your smartphone, and if you do it right, then when they zap that, you know where it came from. Right, but there is a limitation with that. It only shows the last action before they took that action. So you don't know if they were in the store the week before and came in and looked at the thing and sat on the patio furniture that they're going to buy and did all of the, the crazy things that they want to do doing research for this product before they actually made the purchase. Yeah, but does it matter? It does. It does matter. Um, but the point being... We have to go with the numbers that we have. You know, we have to go with the, the information, the best information we can put together. So um, you could say that, uh, you know, well, what if they didn't do print? Um, okay, so they did a test. And actually during the Great Recession, which was 2008, 2009. Seven, I think. Or yeah, between seven and nine, somewhere in there. In that category, whenever they actually say that that started, um, they... Uh, considered discontinuing the print version of their magazine and they did a survey and found that their affluent members, which is pretty much all Costco members, overwhelmingly preferred the print edition. Jenny Roglin, the senior VP of Costco's e-commerce and publishing, says she expects the print edition to the magazine to continue to grow in circulation for many years to come. So when a, a company as big as Costco is making decisions like this, um, then companies as small as some of the ones that are in our um, membership um, or our group of, of folks that, that do marketing for aviation products really should sit up and take notice because they have numbers that we will never have and they can do testing that we can never do and they can do research that uh, you know just makes us drool. Okay, um, you might say, well, Costco's just odd. <laughs> and maybe it is. You know, these are people that buy cases and cases of toilet paper, right? And sell the same like that. Exactly. Um, but William Sonoma is actually the parent company to seven companies, including the Pottery Barn and West Elm. 50% of their company's marketing budget is spent on printed catalogs each year. And that's for the seven brands, including William Sonoma Pottery Barn and West Elm. So once again, we have an affluent clientele. We have the opportunity to do digital. You know, if you've ever been to William Sonoma web, Sonoma's website, you know they've spent a lot of money on that thing. I mean, it's got some beautiful photography. Um, you know, it's got recipes. You know, you could spend days on their uh, on their website, but uh, they spend at least fifty percent of their budget on print. Now, if we could get away without doing print, we would. Um, you know, we would much prefer to uh, be able to work from anywhere. We would much prefer not to have to turn um, our conference room into a mailing room every Friday, uh, you know, to, to send out uh, catalogs and other kinds of things. But we found that these things are just much more effective than we would like them to be for those of us who prefer digital because of the, the trackability of it. All right, so you could say, and maybe you will, that Costco and William Sonoma and you know those brands are um, older people, and uh, you know you do have a point there. But uh, here's another brand, and this is Bonobos, which is actually kind of one of the younger, hipper men's clothing brands. I would say, you would think that a younger, hipper men's clothing brand would concentrate most of their money and time and energy on the web, right? Yes. Well, twenty percent of Bonobos first-time customers are placing orders because they received a printed catalog in the mail. Crazy. Yeah, so um, it is crazy. 
but uh, you know the same catalog buyers are bu spending 1.5 times as much as first-time buyers who did not receive a catalog and who are just buying online. So there is still a, a tradition in this country, and um, as far as I know, this is all U.S. Um, if anybody's got data from from elsewhere, I'd love to see it. But uh, still, you know, people are are doing a lot more purchasing based on paper. And I'm not sure if that's the credibility factor, if that's the convenience factor of having something in your hands. Um, you know, what exactly is it that's causing people to spend money when they have something on paper rather than online? And uh, I think if you had to boil it down, it would probably come down to credibility. What do you think? I'm not sure because we at the, uh, what's that magazine I can't uh, pronounce, Hammaker and Schlemmer. Hammaker Schlemmer, yeah. <laughs> And I like to look at it because you can look at pictures and it just seems more, maybe it is credibility, seems more real. I mean, you see a picture, you see it described, and yeah, you can do all that on the web, but uh, somehow it's different. Yeah, well, on the web you can see the pictures move. They have videos and things. Yeah, I know, but uh, with rare exceptions, you can bypass the video because you can let your brain work on that, right? Mm-hmm. And you see, but you read all of the pertinent data, and I don't know. It just, I can, I can sit on the couch with a cup of coffee and peruse that. I don't have to be at my desk. I don't have to be worrying about what to do with the mouse and spilling coffee on the keyboard. So I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm not quite sure really what to, to put too fine a point on it is. I, I wouldn't know what to say, but I like the magazine. Okay. And I would say that, you know, Americans for generations have been trained to look in catalogs, figure out what they want, whip out their credit card, and make purchases, you know, ever since the old J.C. Penney catalogs. You Which know? makes you wonder, mm -hmm. and gives you pause, if Amazon were to put a catalog out. <laughs> how they would do. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. It would be interesting to see. And what would they put in it? I mean, they've got such a huge inventory. Well, it would be like the old Sears catalogs from way back, when you went to a catalog store just to look at the catalog. Because the catalog's so huge, you can't That's lift right. it. It's yeah. like about a four-inch thing with micro-thin paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one more um, example. Neiman Marcus has found that they get $4 back in sales for every dollar that they spend on producing, printing, and mailing a catalog. Now, that is absolutely staggering. Now, if you could make $4 back for every dollar that you spend on a particular kind of advertising, You'd just be You'd shoveling be, yeah. every dollar you could get your hands on into that uh, that form of advertising. Absolutely. I need to do that all day long. That's crazy. It is. All right. So, you know, obviously print is still has a lot of validity. And anybody who is thinking about completely eliminating print from their repertoire um, is out of their mind. So um, And should think again. And should think again. And, you know, this is interesting because we, with every client we've ever had, we always end up having to arm wrestle with them to get them to do anything with print. And it's partly because of the expense, you know, and I understand that. True. And partly because of the inconvenience because you end up getting some return address or, you know, return uh, bad addresses and other kinds of things. You know, I think probably mm -hmm. the negativism comes from that they've all put glossy ads in magazine, a one-time shot, you know, for one month out of 12 or maybe even recurring, and they've got no way to track, and they don't think it does any good. Because they did a random act of marketing. That's right. It didn't work. They think print is bad. Or maybe it did work, and they don't know how to prove it. Yeah, so it's a, it, it so, was not replicatable right. because it wasn't part of a system. So whatever you do, you know, you need to make sure that it's disciplined and it's measured and it's part of a, a marketing system, but um, every marketing system should include some print, and I can't think of any scenario in which there would be an exception to that. Um, but yeah, I told you I'd to tell you about uh, Sean Buck. He's a um, great guy. He's in a lot of our uh, mastermind groups. And he runs a company called the Newsletter Pro. And what they do is they put together newsletters for four different companies. Um, and he specializes, I think, in, in dentists and a lot of other professions, service mm -hmm. professions, things like that. Um, and uh, we may end up doing some business with him in the future for, uh, for our clients. So stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll keep you informed as we uh, like to leverage smart people's brains in different specialties that are, are outside of, of aviation, of course. 
So, and you can say, you know, you could make the argument, what does all this have to do with aviation? Okay, all the examples that we gave you were affluent customers, right? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, some of them had older customers, and most uh, of our aviation clients also have people who are in their 40s, 50s, you know, and above, things like that as their target customer. Um, some of our folks, you know, like the, uh, the software folks and the um, training companies are targeting younger male customers. So that would be similar to Bonobos and their, uh, their target market. And some of the uh, young folks they call the Nouveau Rich. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the software kids, the yeah. Silicon Valley folks. Or whatever. I mean, they're 30 or give or take and have money to spend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, but in all of these examples, their numbers are larger than ours. You know, there is no way that we would be able to, to test an 8.6 million piece mailing. Um, Costco can do that. Nobody that we know could. Even our ma even our uh, marketing group, uh, they do split testing. They do it on several hundred thousand rather than millions. Exactly. So, you know, when somebody has a really big set of data that, um, and John, you can talk more about how much more reliable statistics are when you have a larger sample set, right? Of course. The larger the universe, the more you can test, the more the numbers mean something. Exactly. So that's a, a problem we're constantly running into in aviation is the small test size um, can be thrown off by one or two um, outliers that really mess up our numbers, right? And if you threw out the outliers, then what you have left is not much because of the size of the universe. Exactly. Right. Okay, so what does this boil down to? Um, what does this mean to you? Um, we think that you should include at least one print component in every campaign, and we do this all the time. We, um, we try to include at least one print component, and here are some examples of how you can do that. You can have a postcard that leads to a call to action on the web. Um, you know, for example, go to this web page and order um, a free book about, uh, about this topic. Or you could send a printed catalog that goes to online demos and videos of each of your products. Um, that's one way to combine print and online. Um, another way you can combine print and online is you use online leads. You know, you use online lead capture like um, some of the very highly targeted retargeting or um, Facebook ads and other kinds of things to get people to your website um, to request a printed information package. Um, in all of those examples, you're using online to save money and to um, track your numbers and to do all the wonderful things that print does for you while you are also including one print element that gives you that uh, that credibility and that advantage that uh, that print does, right? Yep, and you should listen to your customer. They say they want more printed matter than consider that. Exactly. So, you know, a lot of folks that have a newsletter or whatever, you can always ask your customers if they want the printed version, the online version, or both. Um, because if they want both, it doesn't cost you any more to also send them the printed or the, the online version. Right. Um, and you really, really, really do need to have a, a, a printed newsletter, I think, that you send out at least probably quarterly, uh, depending on your customers and depending on what you're doing. So, All right. So um, the freebie this week is still um, our aviation brand design brief template. The template is actually a really good way to show some consistency so that uh, people can see when they get one of your printed materials and then they go online, having that, uh, you know, those design elements, your logo, your colors, your fonts, um, all of those design elements will really help you um, maintain a consistent appearance, uh, whether you're using print or whether you're using digital. And that's something that we've seen a lot of errors and a lot of problems with in aviation is where they have one department doing their print or they outsource their print maybe to a um, to a print shop or, or a graphic designer that does that specializes in print and then they have their webmaster do all of their online graphics and then they end up looking like two completely different companies um, so you don't really know for sure or at least there's a moment of uncertainty when you take that um, printed catalog and then you go to buy something online and it looks like a completely different company consistency is key here mm -hmm. And you may not have to go as completely nutso on consistency as some of the big names like IBM and Wells do, but uh, consistency, the more consistent, the better. Exactly. And using that brand template will help you do that across the board, regardless of 
you know, whether you're using um, subcontractors or, or printers or other, other folks to do some of that work for you. All right, so go sell mus- more stuff. America needs the business. Zig Ziglar. Yep, absolutely. Subscribe to our podcast, um, Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying. It is on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. And uh, please do leave us a review. See you next week. Thanks for joining us for Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the best place to learn what really works in sales and marketing in the aviation industry. Remember to subscribe on iTunes and leave a rating.